Well then, hello. Uh, I don't think you ever see my hands, at least on this channel, since it's completely new, I assume. Um, and I... Sorry that I've popped up into your timeline, but I'm trying to build a Z80 based computer. So some of you might be asking now, why the Z80, why not the 6502 like Ben Eater, or you know, the 8088 or something like that, you know. Why one of those? Uh, why the Z80? Well, uh, the only reason is really that it's, uh, it's easier to uh, program for because you can single step command, so like, you don't have to like have a proper clock in there, you can just like press a button and then it goes one cycle which is pretty useful for someone like me, who basically has no uh, assembly knowledge. It'll be uh, really useful for figuring all that out. Um, so, my plans for this um, computer. I have got this uh, nice little 20 by 4 character LCD screen. Hopefully I'll be able to get this as like the video output. That's my plan anyways. Ideally, I, my, what I'm thinking if everything works out I'd, the way I want it to, is a kind of uh, an MS-DOS-like operating system on this. I've also figured out how I want to map the, the ZA's memory, where, you know, this thing is gonna need access to it. You know, it'll, it'll, the CPU will have to write bytes into this so at some point. You can't just connect everything in one go, and like, like just straight. You could, you could do that, but you know, it's not ideal. So, the memory map that I came up with uh, goes as follows. So, let's, let me just draw this. This is the 64K uh, kilobytes. That's big. Um, this is the 64 kilobyte space that the Z80 can address. This is the entire address bus of the 16 bits that you get. So, how I map it in theory at least. I don't know how I'll be mapping it in real life yet. That, you know. It all depends on how it works out, but basically, these are the 64 kilobytes that the Z80 has access to. And my idea was that I just split it in half, so these 32k and this is 32k. This will be ROM, read-only memory, or in my case it will be an EEPROM. After this we have RAM, which will also be 32k, except there's this one this one little sliver here, which is 256 bytes of uh, I/O, which you know doesn't sound like a lot. With how these act basically is this middle point is 800 hex. That's nothing. How these will act, at least how I've planned it, is um, basically each of these will be able to address a single serial device, which will just give it access to the CPU's data lines. So you know, like maybe you've got like your LCD here. And when, for instance, uh, let's say, I mean, this would be like this, the CIDR circuit here, as I've called it, it works in theory, or at least in software. So basically, the you got your LCD on there, this is the decider, and then you've got the Z80 right here, and that's just hooked right in there. And the address line, the address line is in here, you know, the first eight bits of the CPU's address lines are uh, going into this and making it basically decide what device should have access. So, in this case, uh, let's go with 8001 hex. It's triggered, that'll trigger some LCD. So now uh, the LCD and the, uh, the CPU are connected through whatever means I'll have implemented. This way the CPU can talk to the LCD and the LCD can talk to the CPU. However, what if we now want something like, I don't know, a keyboard? Um, but yeah, let's say like 8002 hex. Uh, let's say like keyboard is connected here. You know, and now the decider, you know, the, the address line outputs this now. Uh, and then the decider goes, oh yeah, uh, no, you no longer have access, I'll connect you. And then the CPU can just talk with the keyboard, for instance. And so on with like whatever devices you want connected to it. It's, it's, it's a work in progress, it's not ideal, but it, it, it would allow you to have up to 256 different like serial devices sending and receiving 8-bit bytes, which is, uh, you know, I'd say it's pretty good. It, this is, will likely be a mess and a little bit confusing. I should preface this with the fact that I've got basically no idea what I'm doing. I basically have no electronical knowledge, like, you know, I do have some knowledge, 
I do have this thing, which is a simple ring oscillator. It's very flimsy, it's very bad, but it, it works actually. It's it's surprising how well the, this worked. Like this little thing here has like an FM transmitter. Uh, anyways, tangent aside, I want to build this thing. I want to build it nice. I want to build it right. I want to build it nicely. I've already picked out some components. So now you see how like these are. This here is 32k. This here is thir uh, 32k. So you may be asking, where the heck are you going to get two 32k chips, an EEPROM and a RAM? And RAM? Uh, it turns out that you can just get those on the internet. They're actually really cheap. For the EEPROM, I've decided to use the the 28C256-150 EEPROM. It has 32K and it's relatively cheap and we can use the full 32K from it, which is perfect. The RAM, for that I'm gonna use um, 62256-80 SRAM, which is extremely cheap actually. Um, and yeah, for the CPU I'm gonna use the, yeah, the, the Zilog Z80. The one I found here is the Z84C00-06MHZ, which is, from what I understand, is just uh, the Z80, but it can just run at 6 megahertz. So now you may be asking, how is the CPU gonna know if it should address the EEPROM or the RAM? Now I've, um, I'm just gonna flip the page over here so we have a nice blank canvas again, simple enough. So let's imagine, here we have the CPU, Sorry, <laughs> a little messy. And now we've got 16 address lines. We've got um, the all of these here going over uh, just directly into the RAM and our ROM, right, right like this. But now, how are they gonna know which one of these should be used? We use this little bit over here which is the last address bit of the 16-bit address bus that the Z80 has. There's this neat little line called the OE, also known as the output enable. Usually these are active load, that's why they've got the line over them. So now, let's look back to the memory map. We want ROM to be accessed in the thir first 32K. How do we do that? In case you didn't know, let's just... 7FFF happens to be a zero at the beginning and then the rest is all ones. It's the highest address you can get with 15 bits. And 2 to the power of 15 is 32k. So if you now add a single one to that, it'll go over and now it should be uh, hex 8000, also known as 1 and then 15 zeros. That's how we'll do it. So we'll use that last single bit of the address. Just connect that to the upper enable, which is active low. Active low means is that it, that it's on when you don't put any power into it. So simple enough. So we want to, if power goes into the ROM chip, so when nothing is going into it, when it's below that first 32K limit, we want it to be on. Now, how do we do that with that upper enable this? We can't just connect it straight, then both of them would be on again. Well, we can just, um, this little symbol in here, probably not the best position for it, now it's too late. It's an inverter. Now we just hook that on there, and now, so now when this one is high, when this line is high, this here goes low. So then the RAM will be active, and this one will be off. Simple enough, but what about I.O.? Where does that come in? I may show it in another video once I've got some of the components so we can like start putting it together. Who knows? And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you know you want like updates on this or something. I just wanted to try this format, see how it works. Maybe it doesn't work whatsoever. Uh, yeah, give me suggestions and just you know tell me what you think. Yeah, make sure to subscribe so you can get to you can be notified when part two, if it ever comes out, uh, you can see it. Well then, goodbye. Have a nice day and. I'll see you around. Bye.